Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand in the house today. Let's get started this morning. Praise God for the things that He's been doing. I want to let you know today that this is not just another church service, but this is a place where you can have an experience with God. This is a place where you can get what you came for and you're going to leave filled. This is a place where when you're hungry, you can come and you can leave full. And this is a place where God wants to do miracles. He wants to perform His signs and wonders, but He wants to do it when we're united. He wants to do it when we come together as the church. So let's praise Him this morning in this house. Let's do what we're doing. Let's just give God the glory because He is an awesome God. He is the one that can perform anything that we need. He is our mission. Come on, church, let's praise 
Let's sing that again. I just feel like we need to sing that again. Let's do it. Come on.
right when we were listening to the song, Not Afraid, and I paused it. I asked him, I said, if, if we had enough people to speak and to have church every single night of the week, if we had enough people on the praise team to where we, we had enough voices, when one got tired, we could have church every night of the week, every night. Would we be hungry enough in a time when our world is starving, starving for direction? Come on, guys. And we have, we have the right direction. We know exactly where we're going. I told Brother Terrence this morning, I said, I want to see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. I want to see people baptized in the name of Jesus. It's the only, the only saving man. I'm pretty much done. Brother Church is about to come pray, I believe. But I don't want church to end this morning. This next song, can we push through like we've never pushed through before? It's that we're going to see revival in our days. Church, we're in the last days. That revival is now. Can we push through right now? In the midst of a trial, in the midst of pain, when we preach about it, brother, brother Richard, in the midst of the fire, that's when God moves to work. Right. Brother Blake coming up here is just another answer to prayer. Brother Blake getting hungry is just another answer to prayer. In the midst of everything that you feel like the devil has come against you, in the midst of everything that we're facing, God is still moving. God is still moving like he's never moved before. Testimony after testimony, I'm here. See, in the midst of pain that I've been feeling, get the testimony of this week. Stage four cancer. Go on. We heard it. God did it. Don't think that there's things being unnoticed. There's things in the background we've been praying for that you haven't thought about. But God is still moving. He's moving better than he's ever moved. He's moving bigger than he's ever moved. God is still moving. So at this time, can we please take these needs? Let's, let's remember Brother McKinney. He's not doing very good at all. Let's remember Sister Virginia. Brother Manning and Sister Manning. There's many others. Yeah. And if you have any other need, just raise your hand because the Lord knows. If we can, let's go before the Lord with faith right now. If He can take cancer away, He can do anything. And I believe it. Let's pray right now. Lord, in the only saving name, as Brother Blake said, in Jesus' name, God, come before you to pray over these needs, to pray over these sicknesses, to pray against every virus, every sickness, every kind of cancer, every kind of deformity in somebody's body.
virus. Here I am. Thank you all for praying for us. Food that was brought. Prophet Ezekiel was deported to Babylon 597 BC. Seven years later, he was called a prophetic minister. The name Ezekiel means God strengthens. And his entire ministry took place in Babylonian captivity. The most common phrase that accompanied Ezekiel's prophetic ministry is the hand of the Lord was upon me. He says it repeatedly throughout his writings. And it's simply a declaration that Brother David, what he was saying came from heaven. Not from his mind or his lips or his heart. It was during this exile, Brother Richard, and much credit for this is given to Ezekiel's preaching that the Jews were forever delivered from idolatrous worship. They never worshipped idols again after Babylonian captivity. More than 70 times in this book, Ezekiel is referred to as the Son of Man. And this is simply to reinforce the truth that we are weak. And that if we are going to succeed, it's going to be because we do it through the power of God. The theme of Ezekiel is absolute holiness of God and judgment for idolatry as well as the social injustices they were guilty of. The book of Ezekiel, I think Brother Terrence and Brother Cody recently read the book of Ezekiel, but... The book of Ezekiel has many powerful scenes within it. Perhaps when Ezekiel looked behind the wall and began to see the things that were done in the name of God and the sinful things that were taking place. And I particularly love when he saw the waters begin to flow out of the temple into the streets of Jerusalem and started out ankle deep and then it came to the thighs and then it came to the loins and then water to swim in. But perhaps the most famous of Ezekiel's stories and Ezekiel's instances is found in Ezekiel chapter number 37, which is commonly referred to as the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel 37, 1 says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of a valley. In the midst of a valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass all the way round about the valley. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very, very dry. The Lord wanted Ezekiel to get a clear picture from every direction and every viewpoint of the calamity to which God sent him. Says they were very, very many bones. They were very dry and they were scattered throughout the valley. With the evidence of hopelessness, Sister Marie, right before him, in the, with the witness of the dead bones scattered all out before him, the Lord asked Ezekiel a question which only has one rational answer. There's only one rational answer that any of us would say. When we saw a valley or a yard or perhaps even one body of bones lying there, he says, Son of man, can these bones live? The only rational answer, Brother Richard, is no way. They're over, they're done with, they're scattered, they're not even together. And they're very dry and they're very scattered. But Ezekiel is locked in to the ministry given by God. And he is aware of the purpose that is upon him and that it's bigger than him. And he offers the only spiritually rational answer. To my flesh and to my mind and to my spirit, there's no way that these scattered, dry, dead bones can live. But he understands who he's talking to. And he says, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. If it happens, it will 
through the sovereignty of God. If it happens, it will only be because God is sovereign. With the evidence of hopelessness lying before him in every direction that he looked, he sees death, he sees defeat, and he sees destruction. And when he sees the lines with the overall attitude, he sees and hears from the people in the middle of whom he lived. But with the acknowledgement of the sovereignty of God, the sovereignty of God means everything. Everybody say everything. everything. The sovereignty of God means that everything is subject to God. Well, let it sink in a minute. In case you're wondering, I'm trying to pace myself. I don't know how I'm going to hold up through all these hours of preaching. <laughs> God is sovereign. Wow. Nobody, nowhere, no how, no way has anything that can overrule God. God is sovereign. Ezekiel, with the acknowledgement, hear me now, with the acknowledgement that God is sovereign. Ezekiel opens himself to unlimited possibilities, understanding his own weaknesses and his own limitations, but at the same time acknowledging that if it's going to happen, it's going to be you, God. It's not going to be me, but it's going to be you. With God, nothing is impossible. And the power of Ezekiel's ministry is found only in the authority of God. Now the oneness of God, we believe there's only one God. We do not believe in the Trinity. But the oneness of God is not revealed to us that we might argue and bust with those that believe otherwise. But that we acknowledge not only His oneness, but Sister Maria, His onlyness. It's not just that there's one, it's that there's only one. And that
verse number 6 he says, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. This is the message he told Ezekiel to preach to the bones. He said, I'm going to cause breath to enter into you, and you're going to live. He said, I'm going to put sinews on you. That's what holds the bones together. He said, then I'm going to put flesh on you, which makes up the body. And then he says, I'm going to cover you with skin. And that's what puts the icing on the cake, as it were, of the form of the body. And then I'm going to put breath in you. And you shall live and know that I am Lord. The Bible says in verse number 7, So Ezekiel preached to the bones. What kind of faith does he got to have? Sometimes I'm scared to preach up in here. And Ezekiel stands out. Think about it, Sister Maria. He stands out on the valley, Brother David. On the, maybe up on the little rise, the foothills. And he begins to preach the word of the Lord to a valley full of dry bones. And he said, there's going to be breath in you. There's going to be sinews on you. There's going to be skin on you. There's going to be flesh on you. And you're going to know that I am the Lord. Last week, excuse me, there was a noise, the Bible says in verse number 7. And behold, the shaking, and the bones came together. Everybody say that. The bones came together. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. Brother David, that tells me they went back to where they were in the first place. Now, last week, while I was quarantined, Brother Donnie saved my life. Not really, but close. I was about to lose my mind. Those of you that have quarantined, I, I, I apologize to not, I'm not being insensitive or minimizing. But I wasn't made to lay in the bed all the time. I wasn't made to sit in the house all the time. Then I started having, I wasn't sick but about three days, but on the third day, Brother Donnie called me, and he told me that, that little Donnie had told him that if you go out and walk, if you've got body aches, you go out and walk, it makes them easier on you. So I said, giddy up. And I went put my shoes on, and my britches on, and my shirt on, I got bundled up a little bit, and I went to the track behind my house, and I began to walk. And just so happens, when I walk, I pray. So I started praying. I want you to know, folks, hear me right now. I, I, I want us to have a good time today, but I came to the Word for the Lord. I'm in straight from heaven. This ain't coming from me. If you don't like me, shut your eyes. And pretend it's somebody you like. But Sister Marie, I come with a clear word from God today. As clear as I've ever heard in my life. I began to pray. And here's what I said. I was not thinking about the Bible at all. But I said, Lord, would you send a healing wind to blow across our country and blow this virus just plumb out of our lives. And if I'm lying, I'm dying right now. The Holy Ghost spoke to me immediately. I mean, not in a second, but Brother Cody immediately. And the Holy Ghost said, from Ezekiel 37, I wasn't thinking about this at all. And the Holy Ghost said, before I could blow on them, the bones had to come together. I said, I knew it was talking about the valley of dry bones, but I didn't know what was going on. I said, all right, Lord. I, I want healing, but the Lord said before I blew on them, they came together. So I went, I read the passage, and I read it, and I read it, and I read it in the number version. And I went to verse number 11, and verse number 11 said, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, here's what the house of Israel is saying. Our bones are dry. They're alive. You understand? The house of Israel is alive, and they're in captivity, and they're complaining. And they're saying, our bones are dried up. These ain't no life in us. And they're saying, our hope 
Can I get a witness? We don't have any hope. And we are cut off for our parts. Now, I have to let you know that that is poorly translated into English because Brother Richard, the words don't line up right. What that literally means is we're done, we're through, or as one translator put it, we have been reduced to just ourselves. Meaning we have nothing but us. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we're cut off. We're through. We are reduced to ourselves. So that's what you're saying. But in verse number 12 he said, Prophesy, that means preach, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord my God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And I'm going to put my spirit in you. Come on, somebody. And I'll put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. He said, this is my promise to you. You will be restored. You will experience revival. Everybody say revival. revival. You will return to the land of promise. And you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now, last night I began to read it again. Promise to goodness, Brother David. I, was, I knew there was something there. But I began to read it. And I began to read it. And I read it over. And I read it in a different translation. And I read the scriptures behind it. And I'm trying to get the context. And, and I realized something. It was like Sister Maria, all of a sudden it just went ka -ching. And I found something I've never seen before in my life. Sister Heidi, could you take me back to about verse number three? Let's see. Verse number five. Excuse me. Verse five. Look at here. Say this to the bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. Read on. And I will lay sinews upon you. That's the cartilage and stuff that holds the bones together. And I will bring up flesh upon you. And I will cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and know that I am the Lord. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That's a wonderful prophecy. Wonderful sermon, Brother Richard, to preach to the dead bones exactly what they need. All but one thing. Do you realize there's one function that God doesn't say, I'm going to do it. Do you realize that we've heard this all of our lives and we sing songs about it? I hate the Lord connected to the shin bone. You know, you know what, Sister Maria? Look at this. God did not bring the bones together. It's not in there. He said, this is what I'm going to do to you. And he preached to them while they were in chaos. And he made them a promise of what he was going to do. But the bones had to come together themselves. God could not and would not bring the promise to pass upon them until they first got their life in order. We cry and we pray and we beg and we fast and we plead for God to bless us. But I come today, I don't know who, I don't know what, but I come today under a divine evening from heaven. The answer to your prayer is not coming until you get your life in order. He said, I'm going to do everything you want. I'm going to do everything you need. I'm going to answer your 
Ezekiel did not preach bones come together. He said there's a promise. But Brother David, the Lord couldn't put cartons, Brother Richard, until the two bones that was made to come together came together. You see, Sister Maria, once again, we have been returned to the creative, to the creative order of God. And your life has been designated and designed for a heavenly purpose, not a worldly purpose. And as long as we're trying to be led by the flesh and not by the spirit, we're not in a position where God can bless us.
I'm calling you today. I prayed, Brother Blake. I prayed, God, let the healing winds blow. Boy, ain't that a good prayer? Well, I said, whoa, let the healing winds blow. And the Lord basically told me, I want to, but I can't. Read it in Exodus 37. The prophet didn't go out there and start grabbing grabbing bones. I wonder where this one goes. But the bones knew where they belonged the whole yeah, time. Right, right. Yeah. I promise you, it ain't in there. The Lord didn't move the bones. He is not going to order your life against your will. Amen. Amen. When the bones came together, you understand that they first ordered their lives as individuals. They first ordered their lives as individuals. And then the Bible said they rose up in the middle of that valley. Now, Brother David, they are an exceeding great army. Because the next step after you get your life in order individually, then you align yourself with the body. They won't let me sing. They won't let me preach. They won't let me do this. They won't let me do that. Let me tell you something. The book says, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. Oh, Ain't stopping nobody from doing nothing. But he won't preach to the woman, brother. They went until the bones first heard the word of the Lord. Stand with me. It was when David awoke. Excuse me. When Adam awoke. <coughs> and the Lord presented him. You know what he said, Sister Maria? Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Brother Terrence, he created marriage. Okay? God created marriage. Marriage is God's idea, not man's. And man doesn't get to do whatever he wants to. It's God's idea. But at the same time, Brother David, he created unity. Because, Sister Stacy, when it was just Adam, there was no need for you. But when he put him to sleep and took a rib out of his side, he brought a woman to him and Therefore, created unity, and it was defined and described as bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. The bones came together, putting themselves in position to receive the promises of God. Now, I, I promise to goodness I did this. I started praying. I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to preach this. But then i got to be able to tell everybody, now, Brother Terrence, you've got to get this in order. Brother Blake, you've got to get this in order. Because everybody knows that's how it's supposed to work. But the Lord said that's not how it works. You see, the bones heard the word of the Lord, and the bones begin to move. So here's how you pray today. First thing, Lord, forgive me for being a dummy. Looking and resting in the arm of the flesh rather than the spirit. Forgive me for letting myself get scattered. Dry. You know what happens when you dry up those day? I don't want to worship no more. You know what the Bible called in unity? How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's because it's like the oil. You know what oil does, Brother David? It lubricates. It moistens. Brother Terrence, we're going to come together. Hear me now. We call it the Valley of Dry Bones, Long Ridge. That ain't what it was. And what it was is the Valley of Revival. Do you understand the whole work of God 
was performed in the valley. And they were changed, Brother David, from death to life and never left the valley. So what are you going to do with the word today? I've heard Brother Pete talk about it many times. Brother Bowyer preached the message here. And what you got to do, you got to say, Lord, search me. Where am I out of order? Say, well, what if there's nobody out of order? If there's nobody out of order, God wouldn't have given me this message to preach. See, we want revival. And there are churches, hear me right now, there are churches that if they would have experienced what we experienced this morning, I wouldn't be preaching right now. It don't get no better than this, folks. I've traveled all across this country. I've been in churches in, in 12 or 14, 16 different states. It don't get no better than this. I'm not just talking about talent. I'm talking about anointing, the power of God flowing. So what's the problem? Bones? There was a noise. And then there was a shaking. And the bones began to come together. What will you ask the Lord for today? Here's how you pray. Lord, where am I on board? What do I need to make different? Some of you know it already because you got mad because I done called it out. I done called it out. We could shout, Brother Blake, but you know what? It would be empty. And when the prophet leaves, you know what you still have? A valley full of dry bones. They had a promise. But Brother Larry, when they heard the word of the Lord, they started moving. The valley of dry bones became the valley of revival. Hear ye the word.
mistaken about scripture that talks about the Lord saying if they would have had this message in Sodom and Gomorrah they would have repented if they would have heard what you're hearing today they would have repented they would have turned from it. I have a scripture for you before I read the announcements this is Joshua 24 and 15 says, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers that served on the other side of the flood or the god of the Amorites, whose land that you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That sums it up right there, Brother Walter. If there's anything in me Sometimes the old attitude rises up, my flesh gets out of hand, and I do things I shouldn't do. And I act ways I shouldn't act. And I have to fall on my face and repent. But I have to know that there is a place that I can go to get things right with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And when I hear a message like I heard this morning, I have to, I have to say, God, am I our Lord? What is it in me? Help me to get it right. That I can be what you call me to be. But both as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm choosing today to be what God has called me to be. And I want to be that every day of my life. Failures? Yeah, you're going to come. Thoughts? You're going to come. But don't no, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. When I fall, when I make a mistake, I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to get up and I'm going to be what God has called me to be. Amen? One more time, let's lift our voices and magnify the Lord in this place. For He is worthy of all praise. We give you praise, God, we give you glory in the house. For you are worthy of all praise. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. I have a few announcements this morning. Just a reminder to please, please, please practice social distancing. Men's prayer meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. For all of you that can, please make it a point to be here. Church cleaning schedule this week is my family, number four, the Bobo team. Ladies, see below the alternative Christmas or the altar Christmas banquet idea. So if you have any ideas, there's a listing below that will let you know what to do. Don't forget Wednesday night Bible study. And there will be kids, in, uh, Riverbend kids in the traffic light classes this Wednesday night. For all of you children that are wanting that, you will be able to go back to that this week. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries in the house this morning? Sir, Blake said he requested Cody the same point by ourselves. Well, Cody, we're going to say happy birthday to him.